Antje Boyd and Broderick Boyd. And we're the creators of the Magnetize Demand Summit. So we're really excited for you to jump right into the next interview because we have created this for you to stop attracting emotionally unavailable men, overcome your trust issue and so much more so you attract that right man for you that makes you feel seen, cherished and supported. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you inside the interview and get you on the path to magnetizing your man once and for all. See you there. Look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Hello, it's Antje Boyd, your fierce leader with the Magnetize the Man Summit where single successful women crack the attraction code and live the happily ever after. And look, sometimes the happily after comes through the online dating world, which is why I invited this amazing expert, Julie Spira, here with me. Julie, say hi. Hi, Antia. Hi, everyone. I'm really, really super excited to be here with you today. Um, and I know that some of these tips are going to make a difference in your life. So get ready for the uh, digital ride. It's going to be really, really amazing, ladies. I'm really, really excited. So let me tell you a little bit about Julie. She is America's top online dating expert and digital matchmaker. She's the founder of Cyber Dating Expert and has been coaching singles on finding their online um, love for over two decades. Wow. You know, Julie is a frequent guest in the media and her dating advice has appeared in over 100 1,500 news stories. Her Irresistible Profiles programs have helped singles shorten their search while finding love on the internet and on mobile dating apps. Because ladies, we have a lot of apps these days. Julie is the recipient of the 2017 iDate Award for Best Dating Coach, which celebrated her for her excellence in navigating love. And let me tell you, the online dating is a jungle where a lot of navigation is needed. She's a dating expert for Match, and her advice has also appeared on eHarmony, JDate, Plenty of Fish, and Zeus. She ranks on the most influential person in social media on the subjects of dating and online dating. You can follow her at Jolie Spira. Hey, Jolie. Hi. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> what a fun. <laughs> I'm really excited because I was, I was thinking, who's the biggest expert in online dating that I could possibly ask the tough questions about that help women navigate, like I said, that jungle of online dating? So Julie, tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get into this world? That's a great question. Um, I was a very early adopter of the internet. And as a technology executive way back when, in the um, early 1990s, um, I had um, gotten my heart broken, you know, for a, a short period of time, and I just decided that I was going to take matters in my, into my own hands because I love technology. I was online in the analog world, certainly way before there ever was, you know, a Facebook or even mobile, even mobile phones, and I put up profiles in chat rooms that love at AOL. And I got such great success with it <laughs> that my um, friends started getting jealous, like, Julie, where are you meeting these great guys from? And, you know, you don't tell people <laughs> that you're meeting guys in chat rooms, you know, in those early days, because those were reserved for people that might have been a little socially challenged. And, um, and then I realized that, you know, that this was going to be huge. And as an early adopter of the internet, I became a very early adopter of online dating. And um, that was a year before Match.com was launched. It was six years before eHarmony was launched. And I really could see the potential of singles connecting in real time all over the world. And it was just became this huge, big digital landscape. And I wanted to make sure that I could master that. First for myself, because if you don't know on your own, then how can you help others? And then, of course, for all of the other people that I've been helping you know, throughout my two decades doing this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And there's so much to learn. There's so many nuances to online dating because it's always evolving. Like you said, when you started, Match.com wasn't even launched. It wasn't even existing. So we see how fast things change these days, Julie. Things do change. So that's why even when I talk about, you know, the, um, the secrets to finding love online, which I talk about a lot, it, it might even change week to week because all of the new mobile dating apps that are coming out are constantly coming up with new updated versions 
uh, versions that are maybe premium instead of freemium, where you might be able to have a better chance at swiping right to meet someone. So to stay on top of all of the technology, it's, it's an enormous job, and, but it's something that I do um, from the bottom of my heart. I know that with all of these changes, they will absolutely make this experience better for you than what you thought it would have been maybe a few years ago. Mm, yeah, that's certainly so true. So Julie, let's talk about like how to create that irresistible profile that we're all hoping to create. I mean, you know, I've been married for four years, but you know, back in the day, you know, I was like, well, is this a great thing to write? I don't know. So short enough, long enough, interesting enough, right? So where does one even start when it comes to creating an irresistible profile? Well, I can tell you that, that to create an irresistible profile is, is something that is hard to do on your own. And these tips will definitely help you. But I also really encourage people to engage in either the services of a professional or a girlfriend and just say to your, your BFF, please take photos for me and help help select them because we are so critical, especially women, you know, we're such perfectionists and, oh, there's a little line under my eye and, oh my, you know, whatever it is, oh, I look overweight today. Whatever it is, is, is that we are so hard on ourselves when it comes to love and we're such perfectionists when it comes to love. And that's actually a hindrance because we can be so perfect that we're not going to go online because we've got five extra pounds to lose, or we're not going to go online because we've had a bad hair day. Mm -hmm. And the fact is you just need to go out and do it. And it doesn't mean you're posting selfies in the mirror. Please do not do that oh. because, you, <laughs> because oh. it really does come down to the photo. And here is really an important thing to remember. And I'm going to say it twice. You're only as good as your worst photo. So let's think about that for a minute. We have all of these pictures on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and selfies, and we're here and we're there, and, and we have these so-called online fabulous lives. But every once in a while, one of those photos is going to be a goofy shot. And, and if it's a selfie, it's not going to be your best photo. So a man is going to look at all your pictures, and gee, she's cute, and gee, I really like you know, this, I like what she's wearing. I like her smile. I like her eyes. And then they come to like the one photo that you don't look like any of the other photos. And they're like, well, that really wasn't her. This is who's going to show up on the date. Then maybe I'm not so interested. So that's why I say the photos are so important. And it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect in your photos, but having a professional photographer will have the lighting and we'll be able to capture the essence of your smile when you don't want to sit there being forced to give like a headshot smile for like a LinkedIn type of profile. They know, and I know, how to bring sort of the essence of love out through the photograph. And so when a man looks into your beautiful eyes in that photo, you know, he can imagine spending his life with you, going on a date with you, having his arm around you. But you've got to make sure that you are putting your best digital foot forward with the pictures. I, I love the digital photo uh, foot uh, forward. And um, let's talk a little bit about like how, how you should show up in the photo and you, should you wear the hair open or closed and how far should you be away from the camera? And uh, you know, what, what should you exuberate? Should you have friends? Should you not have friends? Should you have a good <laughs> dog or not a dog? So there's so many distinctions, right? So, so there are. talking about the photo, what is, what are the, you know, would say like three, four things that are really important? Well, I think um, the photo count is important. And if you only have one photo up, somebody's going to think, well, that's the only good photo this person has. So they probably don't look like that. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, I really like to see five to seven photos on a dating profile. And the reason is you have an opportunity to wear a few different outfits and you have an opportunity indoors and outdoors and maybe on your last favorite vacation spot or maybe outside the concert that you're about to go see your favorite band. So they can see that you have a life and that you're not just a bunch of still photography, you know, pictures. And so five to seven is good. Any less, it's like we wonder why. And any more, it's so overwhelming. We have just seen the entire photo album of your life. Therefore, <laughs> There is nothing left to the imagination and we don't need to meet you. And that's what's going on in these men's brains when you post all of the entire photo album you have from your last vacation on Facebook. Right. Don't do it because they need to be 
They need to be intrigued by what they see and they need to want more of you, which means they need to, which means they need to meet you in person. Mm, I love that so much. And let's go a little bit into what to write in the profile. Let's start with the tagline or the headline or whatever all those online dating sites call it. Like, what do you say there? Like, is it, are you supposed to be funny? Is it, how can you stay unique, um, but still true to your essence? So what would you say is like a good headline, tagline uh, that draws a man in? I happen to like fun and flirty taglines because if you can't you know, go out there and with a smile on your face and look like you're fun to be around, then they're not going to want to be around you because they may be coming home from a busy day at work and work is very serious. And the last thing they want is to be with somebody that sounds like, you know, they want to talk about work all day. So one of my default <laughs> suggestions, which has oh, worked really well for my clients, is we have actually picked lyrics from a song. So I say, what, who, what's your favorite song? So one time I used an Elton John song, Blue Jean Baby, L.A. Lady. Now, guys would like write up, I know that song, that's Elton John. Are, do, you, do you actually dance? Are you a ballerina? And, or I find that men would then fill in the next lyric of the song because they are um, programmed to sort of copy your profile and do a Google search. And when they find out what song it is, they want to be quick and, and they want to be witty and they want to stand out from all the other people that say like, hey. <laughs> yes. so, so if you do, if you use a song and someone recognizes it, that's great. Um, the other thing is, what do you do that you are really passionate about? And please don't say the cliche terms of, oh, I like to go on beach walks and I'm as happy as I am in jeans, as black tie, <laughs> dress me up, or, you know, I work hard and play hard. I can go on and on and on about the cliches right. that if, if they're not allowed to be in a book or an essay, they don't belong on your profile either. Right. Oh, I love that. So what should women do instead? Because you're so right. I mean, sometimes my clients come to me and I see very similar things. What, what should they write instead? And more importantly, like how much should they write? Well, I really believe, you know, that there, there is a sweet spot uh, for word count. And if it's a traditional dating profile, let's say on match.com or OkCupid or Plenty of Fish or eHarmony, I like 125 words, which means 120 to 150 words. Anything more than that, and I'm like yawning, like, please leave the novel at home. People will be intrigued by looking at your photos, your catchy screen name, your headline, and then they might read the first few sentences. And if they like the first few sentences, then they might continue to read down. But as they glance at your profile, if they see 10 paragraphs, it is so overwhelming, it's so exhausting. It's exhausting without even reading. Therefore, they will swipe left and look for someone else who's a little more light and easy and is just giving a little glimpse into your life, not the entire manuscript. And then what should the women write in those 100? I mean, that's not a lot of words, you know, like, so what's, what's, you know, how many topics should they focus on and what, what should, what kind of topics should they focus on and what should they, what should they write in those 125 to 150 words? The most well, important thing, you know, we, you know, we like to talk about ourselves and use the I letter a lot. And then I look at profiles and I start counting one, two, three, four, five. You know, I get to 25 I sentences that start with the word I. And, and it bothers me because what about the we? So you're online for a reason. You're online because you want a relationship and you want to be a part of a couple. And because of that, everything can't start with the word I because somebody wants to know what their life would be like if they were dating you. What would their life be like if they married you? What would their life be like as a couple with you? So it's really important to say things that you like to do, but, but basically reword it and say, you know, on the weekend, I can imagine us taking a walk on and name one of your favorite streets and strolling through a bookstore. You say something that we would do as a couple. Say, I love music. Here's me with my music again, but I'm going to a concert tomorrow night. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> Say, I love music. And tomorrow night, I'm going to be seeing, you know, ELO. And last week, I got to see Hall and & Oates and Train. Have you ever seen them live? You ask a question. Because if you ask someone a question, especially a man, they're very programmed to 
answer the question. Mm. And it's like they got the bonus point. Somebody answered, asked a question and they knew the answer. So that's really important in your 125 words <laughs> is to talk about things that you're passionate about. I also believe in saying where you lived, where you grew up. And the reason is so many people have relocated, whether they left to go to college. I mean, I'm 3,000 miles away. I live in Los Angeles, but I grew up on the East Coast. I say I grew up on the East Coast in these two states, and I loved, you know, the town I grew up in. And then later on, I moved for a job and, and, and some sunshine to Los Angeles. So what happens is other people will see that and say, oh, I know exactly where that town is. I have an uncle that lived there. And then they have an opportunity to engage with you because they're looking for something in your profile to connect with. Mm -hmm. And if they can connect with something that is relatable, again, music, your hometown, where you went to college, things like that, your favorite hiking trail, if they happen to hike as well, they will let you know that they've done that trail for the last 10 years, if you happen to mention it in your profile. I, so what I'm taking away is being specific in a profile, right? Like a specific band or a specific school or a specific town. So like to make it more relatable to the other person and ask questions. It's like an enrolling process, right? I always tell my clients, I'm like, it's like sales. You ask the client questions. <laughs> right. And, and keep in mind, somebody really wants to get to know you. And if your profile looks like a billboard and it's like one dimensional, like come see me, but there's really nothing to talk about, you're not going to have an opportunity to move the process along, which means you need to start chatting back and forth, hopping on the phone and meeting in person. And so if you're just saying... If, you're, if it looks too much like a resume, which is the biggest complaint I get from men, they say that every, one's, every female profile they look at looks the same to them, and they don't know what to ask because there just isn't anything to connect. They don't get hooked in any particular way. And at the end of the day, they want to learn about you, but they want you to hear about them as well. So find a way to connect with some things that are that your mutual interests. And again, it could be the favorite trip you went on in your entire life or the fact that you've been saving money for three years to go to Paris for the first time. You'll be surprised. Someone's going to basically give you a list of everything you should see in the country you want to go visit. Oh, that's so, that's so valuable, you know, because then it's not just about the relationship, but it's also some it's like an interest outside of it, right? So then it's not so heavy that all the weight lies on that person or lies on that relationship. And go ahead. No, just it's really, you know, we're talking about forming a couple, which are two people. So you've got to think in even numbers and not only about yourself. I love that totally, right? And maybe even like end your, your profile with a question with some in, inviting question, right? Right. I'm going to move this over. The, you know, the, here's the thing. If you're stuck on the question and you don't know what to say um, and you don't want to seem boring and you don't want to seem sort of like robot-like, just simply say, and you, question mark. I mean, it's the easiest two words to put on a profile mm. to get someone to open up about why they think that they'd have enough in common with you that it's worth a communication. So Julie, we talked a little bit about from a woman's perspective, how to create an irresistible profile. And I want to just briefly touch on what a woman should look forward to more like the red flags in a man's profile. So she swipes left. Right, right. It's interesting. Um, I would say uh, I've seen so many profiles of guys who are kind of lazy. We talked earlier about the selfie in the mirror. I have no idea why every man seems to think the shirtless selfie showing the love handles in the mirror is really sexy and is going to get a woman to swipe right because it's not. <laughs> and, and yet they seem to um, be, you know, everywhere on the internet. So I think that when you look at a profile of someone and their photo is either blurry or there is no photo, or they have only written one or two sentences on a profile, they're not taking it seriously. So, you know, I look at that and say, well, gee, you know, if you've spent the time and energy to, uh, to make sure that you have the best profile, to make sure that you have, 
you know, you're not, you have your hair done or whatever you've done to get, you know, hire a photographer or hire a dating coach, whatever you've done to make sure that you are putting the best version of you out there. You don't want to be matched up with the worst version of him. And that's what I see with some of these lazy profiles that are not complete and they have blurry or non-existent photos. So that just says to me, how serious are they really? Because a man who is really serious about finding love will answer those 200 questions to make sure he can find the best match. Oh, so true. And I'm personally interested, what do you think about those men who have more than one woman on their arm in one of their photos, maybe even in bikinis? <laughs> Swipe left. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not just the guys. I mean, I, I have to tell everyone, especially the women, they come to me and they say, let's look at my photos that I want to use. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And more often than not, they don't have photos alone. And they have photos with their girlfriends from somebody's birthday party. And they're sipping champagne or wine. And there's so many women in the photo that it's confusing to the man to decide, who, who am I actually going on a date with? Well, we have the same kind of visceral reaction to the men when they have their arms, you know, they're surrounded with beautiful models. It's like, if you want that beautiful model, I don't know, first of all, that you didn't sleep with that beautiful model the night before. And I also don't know if that beautiful model is, happens to be your kissing cousin. So I don't want to be confused. I'm going to swipe left until I see just a picture of you because women do not want to be with serial daters. They do not want to be with players. And they certainly don't want to be with men that want to surround themselves with uh, women in bikinis. Uh, okay, thanks for like just, uh, just saying that too. And what about sunglasses, both ways, for the women's sunglasses and for the guys' sunglasses? What's your take on that? I'm, I'm not a fan of sunglasses. I've never been a fan of sunglasses. And yet everybody comes to me with this gorgeous photo with the sunglasses. And <laughs> here's, the, here's the problem with the sunglasses. They hide your eyes mm -hmm. and people connect with eye to eye contact. That's why they talk about falling in love at first sight or falling in love at first eyesight. And that can't happen if somebody's hiding behind those shades. So not only do we want to see your beautiful eyes and connect with you, there is this default place that the brain goes to that says they're hiding behind those shades. What are they hiding? So it, it really gives a reaction that they're hiding something. So for those two reasons, please, please ditch the sunglasses, both ladies and gentlemen. I get it if you're at a baseball game and you know, you're there and the sun is beaming on you and you want that one shot in the baseball stadium. If it's just one and it's not your primary shot, I will let it slide because it shows you like baseball. Right. But that's about it. Awesome, awesome. So tell me about your, your biggest transformational experience with a client, like where there's really been like the biggest transformation, the biggest shift with her by working with, with you and of course attracting <laughs> the right man for her. There, there have been so many and, and, and it makes me so happy to talk about them because I sort of watch this transformation. It's like the cocoon into the butterfly. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is with the women that I'm coaching and, and the more recent success story that I have to share um, with this beautiful woman, she, um, in her, in her um, 30s or 40s, I'm trying to remember exactly, and she, has not, she had not been on a date for 20 years. And she was absolutely beautiful. However, um, she recently became single and she hadn't dated since her 20s. So she was probably, you know, as I said, she was probably in her 40s. And she um, had gained weight. And she was very insecure and online dating didn't exist when she first got coupled up and, you know, which was right after college. And she was frightened, absolutely frightened, but she brought to the table an insecure person. And the biggest thing we had to work on, the most important thing was her confidence. And confidence is everything. Confidence is the ultimate aphrodisiac. It's sexy for a man to see a confident woman that walks in a room and owns the room and heads will turn. And confidence is the same thing. Women like to see that man that's really confident there that, that everyone wants to talk to. So in order to be that girl, you have to really practice a lot of self-love. 
and you have to know that you are going to be lovable and loved. And so we did the photo session and you know, I picked out all of her clothes. We had the photographer and she was crying in the middle of the session. We had to stop and start at least a half a dozen times. Um, we found the beautiful essence of her and we found the most gorgeous shots. And I saw the Melissa in her that I already knew existed. Mm -hmm. and, and again, once the photos were done, she hated her photos. She said, I don't want to go online. I'm quitting my match membership. And I said, you've been online for 48 hours. <laughs> she said, nobody's going to want me. I said, yes, they will. And she had this laundry list that everyone has. Like he has to be tall, dark, handsome, well-educated, financially secure. I mean, she had a list that, you know, was the perfect man. And I said, all I care about is the perfect man for you. Flash forward, she goes online. I make her go on three duty dates with people that aren't perfect matches for her so she can get used to mm -hmm. dating again for the first time in 20 years. And while that was happening, a certain gentleman wrote to her, fell in love with her primary photo, saw those beautiful blue eyes, and he agreed with me. She said, I have a dating coach. And he said, well, what did your dating coach tell you? My dating coach said to go on three dates. He said, well, do me a favor. Go on those three dates before you go out with me. And she did. And when she went out with him, it was instant. They, they fell in love instantly. They had been communicating for three weeks. And when, by the time they finally met, she had three dates that were pleasant, not the ones, but pleasant. And when she met him and he looked at her and she looked at him, they knew. And not only did they knew they were right for each other and are they madly in love, they both are parents, they both have pets, they both merge their families, their children are similar age, and wouldn't you know it, he found something in her profile that he found interesting, and that was that they both went to the same college, and they went to the same college at the same time and lived one block away and had never met offline, but they met online. And um, they will be spending the rest of their lives together. And this is a woman who said, no one is going to want me. And in three weeks, three weeks, four dates, she met the man she's going to marry. You know, I love that story so much because it goes to show, I always tell my women that the man orbits around you and most likely has been somewhere in the same place with you, right? That no matter what you tell yourself, that you're just, if you have a, a mentor, a coach who helps you to just, stay out there to stay stay online so he can find you because he's orbiting around you but he's kind of yeah. like zooming in on the vibration you know what i mean getting crystal clear and cleaning up his things you know he had probably some things going on too that i didn't meet earlier like that's what this story really showed the timing the timing was right for the two of them and at the end of the day you know he is her soulmate but she says, I could have not done this alone. I could have not done this without you. I, she did not have the confidence. She did not have the skill set to write a profile. She didn't even have the skill set to respond to an email without her hand being held. But, you know, with a lot of love and a lot of belief in her, and I knew that she was an extraordinary woman with a huge, huge heart, and that some lucky man was going to have the opportunity to meet her. Ah, oh, what a beautiful story to end this interview with, Julie. So for the women who totally fell in love with you and really maybe even re-fell in love with online dating, you know, and see, well, maybe there is actually a chance. Like, I understand you have a free gift for them. I do, I do. So it's, um, I, my free gift is the uh, five secrets to finding love online. Um, and I'm sure you have it posted, but it's secrets yeah. to finding love online.com. And that will, I will sort of hold your hand. It's a free ebook and companion audiobook on the most latest secrets um, to finding love online. And I guarantee it will jumpstart your love life. And you will be one of those hmm, almost 50 million singles that are dating online now. Oh, wow. How beautiful. So ladies, there's so much hope out there, especially if you're like in a smaller town or you're feeling like, you know, there's not many events out there that online dating is the better choice for you. Like this gift is definitely, definitely for you. So thank you so much for honoring us with your presence, Julie. My pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. All right. And for the ladies, I'll talk to you next time. 
was not absolutely delicious. We just love how every single expert has those juicy pieces of wisdom for you to enjoy. Look, if you want to own the entire Magnetize the Man series, we invite you to get our Magnetize the Man VIP All Access Package. Not only will you own the entire video series, but also you will get our Magnetize the Man Masterclass that teaches you the three-step formula, step-by-step -step on how to attract the right man for you. You also get some other juicy secret trainings and a one-on-one -on -one call with me where we personalize your individual journey to attract that right man for you as soon as possible. So look, to get that, click the link below that says get access now and you get it all. Own the entire series, including all the juicy bonuses well worth over $1,400 for nearly the fraction of the cost. All right, we will see you in the next interview. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Mwah.